I'm just making these marks. I happen to know what the marks are, right? I don't have to figure it out. Originally, I made these marks at one inch, but one and a quarter, we just made the patterns a little bigger because it's easier to make a hem bigger than it is tiny, right? I can go in there and make a hem like this and be consistent. That's a quarter inch hem, but most of my people working in there can't consistently do it. So it's a lot easier if I uh, pre-sew uh, just build into the pattern a little bit more meat So that's what's happening now this one. I don't actually have to mark this one I need to find center on which is 13 so six and a half Let's see What we're gonna do here That's my marks there and there Any guesses to what we're building what are we building today? <clears throat> We have three pieces of Cordura. One of these is a little bit smaller than the other. Clearly this is the large, but we've got three pieces of Cordura, one piece of Velcro. You can build this in any color. Multicam black is actually um, our most popular color for, for most things now, at least for, for our clientele. Followed by Multicam black red, followed by Multicam. We still do ATAC other colors and other patterns, tropic and alpine, but the number one sellers are Multicam Black, followed by Multicam Black Red Thread, followed by Multicam Classic. Here we are. You can draw your lines if you need to. I just draw marks. I drew this one just to so you could see it. This one I just got two lines and I'm just going to set this in here, start sewing that and then put this needle down, put this where I need it to be, put tension. I'm applying downward force with the finger so the work when I take it off it's not uh, puckered up or anything, it's nice and flat and just consistent tension with the finger will give all your work the exact same stretch so that everything lines up. I wonder if they can hear those chickens crowing on this video. Yeah. Can. I'm sure. Sometimes when I watch them before they go live, I'll have them just through the speakers on the computer. Don't hear them. But hit the headphones on and there's a ton of sound that you're missing if you're not listening to it. This one 
this is even on the bottom so I can pick the best side. This one I'm actually going to sew a hem over the bottom so I need to stage it to where the best pattern is and that's going to be there so I'm going to go ahead and sew this in right here. Level this up, make it even. Which you can do just from shifting your finger. Separate that. Cut those tails off right now while it's already in your hands. It's just about economy of motion. I'm going to pull this out. Make sure this lays flat. Don't want any pillow. In no puffiness. Anybody guess what we're building yet? Bueller. Has anyone guessed yet in any of the comments? No, uh, yeah, because the it's in the title of all. Stop taking them out of the title. Okay. So now it just says full build. Got it. Right on. Episode. Right on. So this will be episode Dude's four. Dude's like, well, the title said clothes bag, so I guess it's a clothes yeah. bag. Well, this will be episode four. I'm right on. All right, we're going to look at the front here. Which one has the best? Oh, I like that pattern. That pattern's the best there, right? So that's where we're going there. I'm going to dock these corners on this Velcro. Just a little touch, you don't have to. Now, of this, which side is the best quadrant here? I like this pattern, so I'm going to go ahead and cover this up right here. And I'm still, I'm not going all the way to the top, but pretty close to the top. I'm going to pack that. Those corners that I docked are so small that I don't have to shift and make a single stitch. I can just stitch it as though it's square. that. making my marks colored pencil so that my label is on straight that is what's gonna draw the eyes everywhere is always the the branding so if you can't get your brand on right and you can't sell your you can't so if you can't get your brand on right and you can't sell your label on straight what are you, what are you even doing marks if you just rub them on your shirt or your pants leg that excess mark will come off which one has the best I'm going to cover most of this so I'm looking to see which one has more pattern at the top and the answer is this one here this side
Now, if you're sewing this and one has more tension than the other, meaning one is a little smaller than the other, shorter, this one happens to be about a sixteenth, maybe a thirty seconds of an inch longer. Now, when you sew this, it's going to pucker up just a little bit no matter what you do. If it was too short, you could pull on it as you're sewing and it will stretch it. Um, being that this is just a little bit longer, I'm just going to kind of hold it and roll my fingers forward a little bit. And that'll actually just shrink it up a little bit. If I needed to, I could actually push on it considerably more uh, to get it to shrink up. Got your uh, telephoto lens there. Mm -hmm. You can see it's nice and even. You can see a little bow right here, but you're not going to see that as soon as I put this center line. I'm going to go ahead and sew back over it one more time here since I didn't do it then. already in your hand. You might as well clean it up right now while it's in your hand. One last time you're going to have to pick it up. I'm going to find the center right here. Do we realize what we're building yet, anybody? Take your time. This is the this is the most critical piece right here. Closing this, you can easily go off um, or <clears throat> or waver right here. You want a nice straight line. Tack it in top and bottom, especially if you're using contrast thread. If you're using colored thread in this thing, that is the part that will uh, glare the most. So what this is is just a bifold wallet. And uh, it's got a cash slot. Has four card identification slots. Very uh, minimal, very clean. Patch of Velcro and your logo. And if you did it right, that logo should be right in the center there. And uh, just super clean. There's a lot of ways you could do this. You could definitely make this thinner and less robust just by folding this. Um, a lot of guys will just edge tape them. The edge tape, it's just not as clean. You don't get the appearance, uh, the clean appearance that you do here. Um, yes, you could absolutely put edge tape on, but your edge tape, you're either gonna terminate raw edges or you're gonna fold it in and it's gonna be super bulky. It's actually much more bulky to do that. Um, so your other option is just to hem it over uh, but getting things in and out of here, eventually that, that raw edge in there is going to fray. So we have concealed the raw edge all the way in the bottom. 
no raw edges exposed. The raw edge is all the way down there. You're never going to have an issue with it. It is very clean, uh, very minimalistic, bifold wallet. We make a trifold. Uh, we actually, I think we make six or seven wallets. Uh, we have something for everybody, really. Um, we always have orders for these. These are wide open. You can order them. We build them as ordered. And we sit down, typically have probably about 40 or 50 of these a week that uh, we build. I build most of these actually personally. Um, just because our labor is so busy, that's always our bottleneck. We can sell, we can literally sell a million dollars in product every month, but we can't build it. We just can't scale where we are. Um, and living in the middle of nowhere is amazing until you want to do a million dollars in business every month. So we just kind of pick and choose. We kind of hit it, quit it onto the next thing. We don't have any dealers. We don't do any wholesale. We turned off all of our dealer program, I guess, eight or nine years ago. Everything we do is direct to consumer and we ship anywhere from 200 to 400 packages around the world to individual consumer uh, every day. So we're definitely um, busy and we could definitely locate, set up another location, subcontract, but Every time we've done that, I always get product that we've never actually put out to the customer. Like we've, we've looked at cut sew shops, we've looked at subcontract shops. When it comes in here, we could take 12 products that we build in house and 12 products that came from another shop, put them in a box and jumble them up, pull them out. You can always tell the others and they're never as clean as ours. Even, even if we clean the threads and do all the stuff, it's just never the same. So we just do what we do, um, very high end, low numbers, and we're completely at capacity all the time. So if you don't, you don't like what you see from us today, look tomorrow, it'll be something completely different. We're always all over the place. Um, our stuff's almost always sold out. If you see it on social media, you better immediately go there if you see it on social media because we put a text out every night. So if you see it, if you're looking at it and the date says yesterday, chances are it's already gone. We try to put a click through link on everything to where you can go and see it. Um, Instagram does that. Facebook, oftentimes we can't. Facebook's always been a mess since it's gone to meta. Um, TikTok, I don't have any click through links on TikTok, but we have a text app. You can join it. The link is on the website. We also have an email. Our text goes out every night um, and shows you a few things that were made each day and there's a link and you can click and order them. Typically when you order those items, they'll ship the next day. Um, and then we send an email out on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and that's a more much robust uh, email. We have anywhere from 70,000 to 100,000 on our email list, and we have, I think, 3,500 on our text. So the text guys, the text goes out early. They get time advantage by about 30 minutes. Um, and then the email list. And we maintain both of those just so that we have direct contact as we get locked down on social media or banned from different platforms, which it always seems to ping pong back and forth. That way we keep contact with our client base. Now, I said 70 to 100,000. A lot of you guys might not realize that email actually has an algorithm to it. And it's a percentage, it's based on a percentage and your click open rate um, dictates whether you are considered a mass spammer. So you need an 9 to 11, and I've never heard the exact answer as which is it, 9 or 11 percent open rate. And if you're not above that, then you're considered in a mass spammer. So our analytics on our back end of our email programs, and we use a couple different ones, because it's, it's weird, and we use paid email uh, programs, but we still maintain two separate lists, even though a lot of people are on both lists, because for some reason, when we send an email out on this one, a lot of people don't get it, but they do and vice versa. So it makes, there's no rhyme or reason to it, but we can go to the back end and see has not opened in a year or a month. We can set the parameters or whatever. So typically guys who haven't ordered, we remove them from the list. So every, quarter we go through and, and remove 30 percent 40 percent and what happens miraculously when we do that we'll go through on a thursday and send the non-performance customers a thing that says hey here's ten dollars off your order uh this code uh expires in 24 hours and we'll see a, we'll see a spike you know you'll get a few grand in sales off of those guys who haven't ordered 
um, or even opened, which is weird that they will open that but not the others. Um, and then we remove all the ones that don't open. We see it the next day. And every time we kill 20, 25% of our email list, the sales are up by 30, 40, even 50% on Friday when we push the real email out by dropping those non-performance, it just boosts us into, because what, what it's really about is, it's about all the guys using free email apps. So if you're using Google, Hotmail, Gmail, they have analytics to that and they have filters and stuff. And, and some guys have emails where they straight just don't even see our emails. They won't see them from one place, but will for another. And they have to go into their, uh, their settings and actually make it so that they can see our stuff. So this, is our bifold wallet. We build a bunch of them. You can see them at soetacticalgear.com if you want one. Uh, best comment in this video as to what this is, I don't know, entertain me, educate me, say something funny. Um, we'll give this away. I'll pick the comment that I like the best and uh, we'll mail this to you. So check it out. I do a live video almost every night at nine o'clock on YouTube. We've got uh, well over 3,500 videos now at this point on YouTube and uh, I do a live video every night at nine o'clock on Facebook. No, I do a lot. What am I even saying? I do a live video every night at nine o'clock on YouTube and occasionally we'll do it on Facebook or when I'm just sewing or whatever. Um, I'll throw on an Instagram live, but we're, we're everywhere. Instagram, Twitter, um, TikTok, we're, we're all over the place with content. So you can see stuff everywhere, but if you want to be a customer, then you really need to be on our text app or our email list. and. Uh, I do the lives every night on YouTube around nine o'clock and I just start right in the beginning just showing you what we built for the day so that if you see something you want, you don't have to watch the rest of the video. But if you want to entertain, if you want to participate, um, those conversations generally are driven by you guys. So type out whatever you want and we'll talk politics, we'll talk business, we'll talk homesteading, we'll talk whatever you want. Um, but we're easy to find. So that was it. That's how you build a bifold wallet. Now, you go build your own wallet or buy my wallet or start a business, whatever. I just showed you how to build this. Um, so you just have to decide where you're going to get yours from.